This is where you guys do all the talking. No. Yeah. Bro, your beard is coming in thick. Are you going to put some Just for Men in it? Probably going to have to at some point. All right, sorry to break this up, boys, but I think it's time to start. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's video conference presented by the National Hockey League and the NHL Players Association. Uh, today we have something a little different, a conversation among three former teammates that is uh, really a family reunion. So let's welcome Patrick Marlowe of the Pittsburgh Penguins and Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Gentlemen, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having us. All right, all right. Let's go around the group just uh, to find out where you are, who you're holed up with and how you're doing during the pause. And uh, let's start with the guy who broke in first, Patrick Marlowe. Um, in San Jose right now with, uh, with all my family and uh, the home. I'm not going to lie. The homeschooling thing's been a little tough on me, but uh, um, it's been going good this week. They're, they're off. So it's, uh, it's a, it's a good week uh, to take a break here and uh, regroup for the next week of, of homeschooling. Right. Let's let's go in birth order. I think Mitch is five or six months or, uh, older than Austin. So Mitch, you go mm -hmm. next. Uh yeah. I'm just I'm at my house in Toronto. I'm just with my girlfriend and my dog. So we've just been hanging out, kind of watching TV shows. It's been nice having a dog right now. Take him for walks, kind of through a pathway, and try and get some uh, some outside time when I can. All right, Austin. I'm in Phoenix right now. Actually, uh, Freddie Anderson's here with me. Um, just been kind of hanging out, um, you know, by the pool, just chilling and doing the, uh, the sun for a bit. All right. Well, it sounds like you're all holding up as well as you can. Uh, let's get into what people really want to talk about. I, I think everybody knows that the three of you developed a, a really close relationship when you were teammates in Toronto. And, and I guess, uh, just anybody jump in, tell me how it all started, how it developed and, uh, and really what, what it means to you guys. I guess I'll go Yeah. All right, I guess. I don't know. I think, uh, you know, when I made the decision to go to Toronto, I, I was watching these guys on on video. And then once I got to training camp, they just seemed like really good good guys and good young guys. And um, I don't know, just took a, took a liking to them. And uh, I think our first road trip, I kind of just barged into their room and said, let's do something or hang out. And uh, – and then uh, kind of just, you know, evolved from there, I guess. I don't know. What do you get? Was that how you guys recall? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, was I think because yeah, you were like quiet. You were quiet when we first, like, uh, like when I first met you, you were pretty quiet. And then, I don't know, like, yeah, one of our first road trips, um, I don't even know who I went to dinner with. But then when I got back, you were in Mitch's bed <laughs> yeah. with Mitch and and uh, waiting for me, and we we're gonna watch like a movie, and we put on Cars three, mm -hmm. and that was kind of that, yeah. uh, kind of like a tradition. Every road trip, we'd uh, put on a movie and order dessert. It's well said. That's how I would say it too. What's up, Jags? Nice hey, shirt, Jags. <laughs> so Patrick, when you were when you were thinking about going there, um it always seems like teams are looking for, you know, veteran pros to teach younger guys how to be pros. That's what they always talk about. Was that part of, part of the pitch that, that Toronto gave to you? And was that part of something you were looking forward to? Um, yeah, I knew, I knew the team was younger and I knew they were really highly skilled and played, uh, you know, that up um offensive game. So, and then having a, having a chance to play with, with these guys and, um, you know, they make everybody around them better. So it was, uh, that was one of the things that appealed to me for sure. Did that really have an impact, Austin and Mitch? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I, think, I, I think just, I mean, knowing that when we found out Patty was going to sign, I think it just, not just for us, but our whole team, it gave us the confidence that, you know, we're bringing in a guy that can, you know, do, do everything our team needed and do, I think, a long run in the playoffs and, I think just gave everyone confidence, but as soon as Patty came in, I mean, everyone knew what his resume was, how long he's been in the league, and I think as soon as he started speaking, everyone listened, and that was something that I think we're both very grateful to have played with him for a couple of years and enjoy that. I mean, Austin, did you watch him, like, as a younger player, watching an older player just prepare for a practice and prepare for a game? And Was that a focus of yours? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um... 
you know, just having him there. And like I said, he was pretty quiet first couple of weeks. So, um, you that? yeah, <laughs> didn't really talk to me at all. He was avoiding me, but, um, <laughs> I mean, I think uh, you're always yeah, kind of no, like no. have a pretty watchful eye, I guess, especially when, uh, there's new guys and training camp kind of gets started and, uh, just like kind of watching his routine and, um, you know, getting to know him slowly, um, I just seeing how, uh, you know, passionate he is about hockey and the way he prepares and, uh, you know, just kind of does his own thing and in, in a good way. But I think it was really nice to kind of have uh, him around, like, you know, on and off the ice and just kind of have a, somebody to, you know, have good conversations with and just a backboard on, on different things and as far as life goes and hockey goes. And um, you know, I know for myself and Mitch, uh, we still all kind of keep in contact with him. And I know that... You know, if I ever, uh, you know, kind of need something or, you know, want to bounce something off somebody, he's a guy that has obviously been through a lot. And, um, you know, I know he's a close friend of mine and he's always going to give me an honest honest feedback and his opinion. How delicate is that process of coming to a new team where you're the new guy and they already have kind of an ecosystem and they're, you know, they're friends. And you know that one of the things you need to do is, is be a leader. And how do you time it? And when do you, when do you really insert yourself? So that was, that was for me. Sorry. Yes, that was. I'm sorry, Patrick. You guys distracted me a little bit. That's all right. Um, yeah, I think uh, you know, coming in uh, to a new, I never been on a different team or anything like that. New guys, so for me, I always kind of just sit back a little bit and first few days, kind of watch what's what's going on. How guys interact and um, you know, see which guys are. Uh, Mitch, please. I don't even. That's a, I've I've been here for like three weeks. And I had never heard that once. So this is as well. I'm not, I just took this off. I thought it, I thought it was one of you guys. I don't know what that was. Sorry, Pat. All right. I don't. It was going to be epic. Uh, epic answer, but no. Yeah. It's totally gone now. I don't even know what I was talking about. <laughs> All right, so let's go in a different direction. So, so you you crash Mitch's uh, hotel room, uh, which seems to take this relationship to a new level. Um, then, how does it evolve to you know you're inviting them over for for dinners and and when did you guys? How quickly did you guys just feel like part of the family? Go ahead, Austin. You want to go? Yeah, you want to go? Uh, I'm gonna go first. Well, either, uh, I mean, either turn the ringer off or uh, put the dog outside. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> someone's at the front door. Zeus is going nuts. All right, I'll I go can't through. focus. I'll, I'll block him out. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just think. Uh, I mean, you see the two guys behind Patty right now. Those two, I think, had uh, had a big influence to get us over there. They wanted to play some mini sticks, have some fun with it. So, um, I remember as soon as we went over there, me and Matt's. I don't think the first time we brought shorts or anything. And then every other time we went after, we brought an extra pair of clothes and some shorts and T-shirts so that uh, we knew we were going to get all sweaty and um, play mini stakes for hours. So I think that's kind of just where the, the really relationship started is when we started going over there and hanging out with all the kids and um, just kind of feeling like really we were a part of the family. Yeah, I'd say it evolved like pretty quick after that. Um, you know, you had us over and obviously the boys are, uh, are a blast to hang out with and I think they liked hanging out with us. and. Um, I always had a good time, and mini sticks got intense. Um, <laughs> uh, what's it called? The uh, the iPad or the uh, Apple watches were broken, and uh, oh, yeah. it was always a good time. <laughs> is that it? You play until something's broken? Is that the end? Is that yeah. the final buzzer? That's pretty much how it worked. That's so that's, which that's intermission when something gets broke, we just yeah. keep going. All right, so I was going to have this as one of the questions in the game we're going to play, but but of the three of you, which is the guy in the mini sticks game that really is trying to win, even though he's pretending like it's not that big a deal? I feel like Matt's, but I think Matt's going to say me. Uh, I think Pat is going to be the. I think Pat will be the deciding factor in this. Yeah, I think Matt's is. Yeah, but I want like I didn't like I didn't play it off like I didn't want to win. Like I wanted to win. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah, he showed that he wanted to win. He was he was doing it all. If he wasn't uh, the best one out there, he was the loudest, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, since, we're, uh, since we've started our game play, let's, uh, let's try something. 
So I tried this with the Sedin brothers a couple of years ago, and it's freaky how much they knew about each other. Let's see how much you guys really do know about each other. I think everybody's got something to write with and something they can hold mm-hmm. up. I'm going to play a version of the newlywed game, which uh, I know about. Patrick probably saw it on reruns. I don't know if uh, you two guys have ever seen this game. But I will ask a question about one of you. We'll see how much the other two actually know. I'll say one, two, three, and everybody hold up their answer. Okay? First question is about Patrick Marlowe. Patrick was selected second overall by San Jose in the 97 NHL draft. Which future teammate of his was chosen first overall? Write your answers down. Can we show them? I'll tell you. Wait, wait. All right. Austin's still working. Okay, we're good. Three, two, one. Hold them up. Jumbo, jumbo, jumbo. Okay, real good. Good. We're off to a good start. Okay, that was easy. Let's let's start and do another one. Austin Matthews question. Austin took a unique route to the NHL. Rather than playing Canadian junior or U.S. college hockey in his draft eligible season, he went overseas. Where did he play in 2015-16, and what was the name of the team? Patrick already I sees hope, I hope I hope that's how you spell it. <laughs> yeah, you're going to go play for them, too. Oh, I didn't know that. Three, oh. two, one. Did I spell it right? Oh, okay. So everybody's got two points. All right. A Mitch Marner question. Everybody knows that Austin scored four goals in his first NHL game. How many games did it take Mitch to score his first NHL goal? And which goaltender did he beat? Oh, Austin's got a heads up. I, I, can't, in this game. I, I just know, wrote I, my answer way too big. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to spell his yes. name, but I know I know where he is now. You better get a new play there, Austin. <laughs> I know. Um, I don't know Patrick, you got an man. answer? I, I don't. Uh, one second. I, I, I know, but I don't know how to spell the goalie's name. But I know where he is now. He's in Dallas. I'll say yeah. you're giving hints. Seven games. Uh, bro, are you? Uh, <laughs> Wait, Austin, you have an answer yet? I know the game, but I, I know the goalie too, but I'm just like blanking right now. I know he plays in Dallas. I, I don't know how you Because Mitch just it. told me. The one okay, now. three, two, one. Hold up your hand. Hold up. It's two. I don't know. I know it starts with a K. I can't remember where like, it goes. It's... Kudobin? Oh, Kudobin. Anton, Kudobin. Very That's good. It. Anton Kudobin. Kudobin. We have yeah. a hockey scholar in the, in the group here. Excellent. All right. Back to a Patrick Marlowe question. Let's see how much you guys really paid attention to your mentor when he was getting ready for a game or a practice. When Patrick puts his gear on, does he put his right skate on first or his left skate on first? This is Patrick. Pat, do you even know? know? I don't even know. <laughs> this is just a guess. This is a I'm terrible question. Too. I'm guessing too, so. <laughs> I hope we're guessing right. All right. Three, two, one. Ah, right. uh, crikey. Oh. You know what, though? You guys are probably right, and I'm probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. An Austin Matthews question. Austin's roots in the Southwest often raise questions about why he didn't focus on a different sport, which is a stupid question because hockey is obviously the best sport. Anyway, other than hockey, what is the sport he's best at? What is the sport he's best at? Other than hockey. I mean, I don't I got mine. <laughs> he's not, he's I got good mine, at all sports. I think that's what he wants to hear, right? Are we ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Baseball, baseball. Uh, you guys are good at this. Okay. I'll try one more for Mitch. All right. Uh, we learned from Cup Confidential last spring that uh, you like to stir your ice cream into soup before <laughs> eating it, which I, I, I do too. I think it's a great idea. What is Mitch's favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, 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 oh this is a – I like, don't know if you guys are... – Overall, overall flavor, is that what you're asking? Like not yeah. just like vanilla or – okay. All right. Matt, you should know this. You, you went out to get me. Ice cream constantly on the road. Oh yeah, I have, haven't I? That's scary. Uh, no, but on the road. I spelt it. I think I butchered the spelling. Um. Ready? Three, Hold two. Hold on. Oh, oh. Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're good. Three, I'll just two, it up. one. 
Cookie dough. Oh. Oh, all right. Every, uh, my, my questions clearly are not that challenging. I think we need to bring in a guest host. Is there somebody who can help us out with this game and make it much more entertaining? There we go. More questions? <laughs> I, I can Hi, Tina. Up. Hi, guys. <laughs> All right. Better All right, Christina, you, you start us off. Give us a question. Um, which one of you is most likely to binge watch Love is Blind? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> That's a good one, Christina. Keep going. Um, another one. What? You got one? You got one? No. <laughs> um. All right, Christina. I have one. The when they come over, when they come over for dinner, which of the three is most likely to jump up first to help clear the table and wash the dishes? Okay, well, three, two, one. No, there is no. I said you guys. <laughs> All right, everybody's trying to, to pump everybody you guys are I, see, I see how this works. Which one of you is most likely to fall asleep on the couch, though? That's a better question. Oh. No, that's so <laughs> easy. He, he did this. Oh. <laughs> he did this, Chris. Three, two, one. Uh, whoa, why me? Because you were the one who slept. You slept <laughs> Exposed. Anyway. All right, Christina, you got another one? Well, the, the, I was going to ask which one is most competitive playing mini hockey, but I think they, they answered they, that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, you guys got all those. Um, all right, here's one. If you guys were actually all by yourselves at this moment, no support staff, which one of you would run out of clean clothes the fastest? <laughs> oh, that's wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you and yourself? You, you got Freddie only, though, no? Yeah, but this was uh, if you're by yourself, like. Yeah. I guess. All, All right. right. Go ahead, Christina. Get another one. Yeah, which one of you is most likely to just live on pizza if you couldn't have Live on what? <laughs> live, on yeah. pizza. live on pizza. <laughs> oh. So which one of us could? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's unanimous. Yeah, that one's Boston pizza. All right. Do the boys have a question? You have a question for them? Uh, no. <laughs> All good. Christina, you have any more? I think that's it. I got to go with, I'm, Actually, we're missing a couple of kids, so I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm running out so of paper for Christina. Christina. Which one takes the most penalties in mini hockey? Oh, that's a good oh. one. Great question. Do you, count as, do you count as that? Can I put your <laughs> name down? You or your brother? Oh, yeah. All right, three, two, one. I have 34 or Landon. <laughs> I got Landon and Brody. Fantastic. It depends who slashes first. There's always a retaliation penalty. Who sells the hardest during mini hockey? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Ho, 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 ho. That's right. Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Landon, Landon does silly hard. That's a good one. All right. I've got like three paper plates left. <laughs> I just, I just turned it to the other side of my paper now, so I'm rocking the back side of them. 
All right, let's, we'll, we'll go once, once around. Each of you come up with a question. Austin, you go first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like pressure with no advance warning. I don't even know how this game really works, to be honest. Uh, come up with a question. Which one of you is the most or best or the worst? And uh, um, Can I go last? Yeah, you go last. Patrick, you go. Um, you guys think of something. See, this is why we have the call before the call, and I should have warned yeah. you guys about yeah. this, and I did not, so uh, that's okay. Oh, yeah. Who takes, uh, who takes the longest who, to get ready? Who takes the longest to get ready? That's a good one. Like, just to get dressed or, like, suit-wise? Yeah, to go out to dinner, to go out to... Why are you looking at me? <laughs> no? Three, two, one. <laughs> Unanimous. All right. Well, uh, Austin's running out of plates, so I got uh, a I got a question. Okay. Um who usually pays for dinner when we go out to eat? Oh, good one. Three, two, one. Okay, I see how this works. <laughs> the loser. Oh, that's the loser. A good one. All, right. All right, I got, I got an interesting one. Um, other than the credit card game, when we do play games to pay for the bill, what is the other one that we started to create? Uh, I think our halfway through our first year, we started another game that if you did something, you have to pay for the bill. I feel like we played this like once. Well, yeah. There's another way to stop Pat from trying to pay the bill. <laughs> Three, two, one. Yep. Explain that. Explain that to our uh, viewers at home who have no idea what that is. Uh, yeah, no, we started playing. Uh, so dinners, you couldn't touch your phone. If you touch your phone, you have to pay the bill. Uh, There's more so that we can just uh, kind of just enjoy the presence of each other more and I think just talk about other things and um, other than just being right down on our phone looking at Twitter, Instagram, or texting people. So it was kind of just a fun way just to be more interactive with each other. But then Patty would get like a call from like Christina or, <laughs> or one of the kids and he'd have to or answer. The so kids we made a rule. An auto loss. <laughs> yeah, we made a rule. Like, the, the phone answer was, was allowed for Pat. <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, – you guys have been really generous with your time, so let's let's go around a little and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Patrick, new team for you. Uh, you were going into a situation, you know, where you're going to a playoff team, and I'm sure you're really fired up about that. What are your yeah, thoughts um, about, about joining that team and, and about getting this going again so you can make another playoff run? Yeah, no, it was uh, – you know, the, the short amount of time I spent there was great. The, the, the guys were great, and uh, – yeah, just a great op opportunity for myself to, you know, get another shot at uh, winning a cup with, uh, with the Penguins. And um, everything's been great with the organization. They've helped every step of the way. And I'm looking forward to, you know, getting out of the house. And like, I'm sure like everybody else is and, and get back to, to normal and, and get out there and, and start playing again. All right. Mitch and Austin, you're also in a playoff spot. I'm sure you, you want to get this thing going again. Mitch, why don't, you, why don't you tell us what the frustration level is here now and how you're get, trying to stay ready for when we start again. Uh, yeah, I think obviously it's high, but, um, you know, there's bigger things than hockey and that's, you know, people's lives and uh, just making sure everyone's doing their part and staying home and being healthy with each other, staying safe. And I think uh, we were a little bit in an up and down kind of roller coaster ride there for the last little couple of weeks. So, I think this is a good time kind of for us just to settle down and realize that we have the potential and the team that can do some great things. And uh, I think our team's been talking a lot. We, we've all been chatting with each other. And it's, uh, like I said, it's a frustrating time to have this break, but I think everyone's just trying to stay ready and stay ready for that, for that playoff push and for the, these last couple of weeks. Austin, I tried to get through this call without asking you about this, but I've gotten so many texts while we're doing this. How did the call with Justin Bieber happen yesterday? And, uh, 
how often are you guys actually staying in touch? Um, he just kind of messaged me in the morning and asked if I wanted to go on uh, on Instagram Live with him at uh, I forget what time and still got much going on right now. So um, <laughs> so I just was like, yeah, no problem. And um, I mean, I guess myself, Mitch, Tyson. I mean, we kind of talk to him every uh, every once in a while. Um, I mean, he's a pretty busy guy, I guess. So. I uh, try not to really bother him too much, but obviously uh, it's been pretty sweet to, to get to know him, uh, you know, this year and get to spend time with him and uh, just kind of, you know, kick it and have fun. If when it happens, how many times will we beat Bennington out of 10 shots? Um, I mean, I think he gets at least one. Like, I think he can score one. All right. All right. To close it out, let's go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once around the group, we'll start in the opposite direction. Just a message for the fans who are sitting at home, dying to see you guys back in your gear and on the ice. Uh, Austin, what do you have to say? Uh, I mean, I think we're itching and uh, dying to get back just as much. But, uh, you know, like like Mitch said, obviously, uh, you know, there's some things that are bigger in hockey, and uh, this is uh, definitely one of them. So, you know, I hope everybody out there is staying safe and uh, practicing their social distancing and, uh, you know, just – Staying safe, I think that's the most important part. Obviously, uh, we hope to be back out there as soon as possible. Thanks, Austin. Mitch? Uh, yeah, well, I'll just go off that with Austin. Um, you know, he's uh, we're on the same boat, um, I think, for, for both of us and our whole team. We just want to thank all the, uh, all the health staff around the world right now that's doing all their parts and make sure that they're putting themselves in danger to try and make other people healthy. That's uh, it's, it's, it's so, so brave of them. And, uh, it takes a lot of courage to do that. So I think for our team and for the league, you know, we just want to say thank you to all of them. And um, it's unbelievable what they're doing and what they're sacrificing for us. Thanks, Mitch. Patrick? Uh, yeah, just uh, everything that they said. Plus, uh, I'm getting told to wash your hands 20 seconds or <laughs> your birthday twice, all that. Uh, don't touch your face when you go out. Uh, if you do have to go out to the grocery store, do the essentials only. And um, practice social distancing, but uh, I think the sooner we, we do all the, the right things, the sooner we'll be able to be uh, in front of the fans and enjoying uh, playing again and enjoying being with the fans. Well, guys, that, that was really great. Thanks so much for letting us eavesdrop on your family reunion, and uh, let's hope that the next time we see all of you, uh, you're on the ice again, maybe, uh, maybe in a conference final. That would be good, too. So uh, mm -hmm. enjoy the day. Thanks again. All right, thanks. Thank you.